Well, welcome back folks. Today we're going to move on to installing the rebuilt carburetors on the Yamaha YL1. And if time allows, we're going to move on and install the rear shocks. But first we need to do a little maintenance to prepare the throttle cable for use with the... We're going to now work on cleaning up the throttle cable assembly and I'm going to replace some of these cables. This is the original throttle cable assembly that I pulled off the bike when I broke it down. I just have it wrapped around and doubled back on itself so it all fit into the, uh, the frame of the video. This end of the cable right here is the part that goes up to the throttle grip assembly. And when you twist the throttle grip assembly, it'll pull on this end right here. It comes down to this junction block right here under my hand where it splits into three. A longer one goes to the oil pump the two shorter ones go to the uh, carburetors. I don't need to replace all of these parts. I've ins I previously had inspected them quite some time ago and I'm going to replace three of the four separate cables. I'm going to replace the cable that comes down from the twist grip. That's this one right here. That's a new NOS part and the reason being is the original cable has a uh, abrasion in it. You can see right here where it's been abraded over time. So this cable is going to replace, be replaced with NOS. The uh, cable that goes down to the oil pump, which is this one right here, is going to be replaced be, primarily because part of it's missing. If I pull this boot back, you can see that the boot is missing. And this is in a fairly rough condition here. It's kind of rusty. It could probably be salvaged. If this was a rider, I'd be uh, fine for that, but since this is a restoration and I want the uh, rubber boot that's missing on the original, I'm going to replace the oil pump cable and then one of the two throttle cables I'm going to replace. Uh, this particular one right here, as you can see, it's also cracked. The exterior coating right there is cracked. The other one, the second uh, carburetor cable is fine. It's got a little bit of a, of a wiggle to it but it's intact and it hasn't been compromised. So I'll need to salvage this rubber boot to go with the new uh, throttle cable right here. So all three of the new cables or replacement cables are NOS and have never been installed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, spend a little more time cleaning everything up and then we'll come back and I'll start taking these uh, fittings apart and we'll see if we can't swap some of these cables around. I've done a quick wipe down of all the components here with some uh, just cotton cloths and WD-40. WD-40 is a great cleaner, by the way. It's actually a better cleaner than it is a lubricant. And now we're going to start swapping some of these cables around. Now remember that three of these four cables are going to be replaced on the original uh, cable setup. And we're going to start with replacing the main cable that comes down from the twist grip. That's the longer of the four. That's the one that comes into the one end here of the junction box. So what I'm going to do is attempt to separate this, uh, these two components because the new cable has the cap built into it. You can see it right there. So this piece on the new cable is included. And usually you can just snap these open or pop them apart. Sometimes these can be a little bit difficult. This is plastic after all, so you do have to be careful. Um, it is possible to break them when you open them up. I've had these on other bikes. I've never done a Yamaha one like this, but on other brands, that with a little persuasion, sometimes will just pop apart. And this one's already, you can see right there, it's, it's kind of loose, so I'm expecting it's going to just pop open like that. And that's that's about as easy as it gets, folks. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, sometimes they can give you a little bit of a struggle. Since this uh, white nylon block is also included on the new main throttle cable, as you can see there, this will stay with the old cable. But what I do need to do is separate these three cables that go on to the rest of the harness from this white block. Because remember, one of these cables is going to be reused. And 
usually what you can do is just take a needle nose pliers or a suitable tool like this and just pop them out as you can see see that little slot right there I think you can see it let me demonstrate how that one just popped out on its own now we have the main cable separated from the rest of the assembly we'll no longer need this put that aside and again here's the new main throttle cable that we'll be installing in a moment the first thing I'm going to do is separate the rest of these uh, cables from this block right here and the reason I'm going to do that is I don't know if you can see that in there or not probably not very well it's a little dirty in there I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to clean that out a little bit with some brushes, a little WD-40, see if I can't get some of that dirt. I think it's basically dirt. And clean up a little bit, and then we'll be back and put this together. Well, I got this um, tube cleaned. I think you can probably see there. I just used a little WD-40, spray a little WD-40 in there and used four of these little soft nylon brushes and just clean it out really good and then I rinsed it with uh, this contact cleaner which is a plastic safe fast evaporating cleaner I think you've seen me talk about that before so this is uh, this is pretty much ready to go at this point remembering that uh, two of these three cables original cables are going to be uh, replaced we have to just figure out which one is which here. If you recall, one of them, or the shorter ones, this is the carburetor cable. Had a break in it, crack in it right there. So this one's going to be replaced with this one. So the first thing I need to do is get this uh, rubber boot off of here. And that just pops off. So this cable is going to be replaced also. So we're going to set that aside. And here's the replacement cable right here. And this is NOS. So we need to pop this uh, boot back on. So I'm just going to do a quick wipe down of this inside. It's very clean in there actually. Not much, not much in there at all. Just wipe it out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make sure it's clean, reasonably clean, which it is. And then this just fits down over like the previous one did. That, that cable is ready to go back together. This cable is the one we're going to keep. And this is the uh, oil cable, so that's going to be replaced with this one. Now that I have the assembly apart, what I'm going to do next is lubricate all four of these uh, cables. And the reason I'm doing that now, it's a little easier when everything is, is detached disassembled than doing it when it's all put together with this uh, union um, box here. In order to uh, lubricate them, I'm going to take the three lower cables like you can see here and just groove them together, put a, a uh, zip tie around it like that. I'm just going to group them together in a fashion like that. And then I'm going to hang them vertically like that and I'm going to spray cable lube down each of these cables. I'm not going to use one of those small uh, pressure lubricators that you can uh, buy and use. I have, I think, two of those around here somewhere. But um, it's really not necessary in this case. Those are fine if you're working on a bike, but I don't need to do that here. I cut off it. Uh, that uh, tail of that zip tie because uh, those suckers can scratch you otherwise and poke you in the face. I'm just going to use this chain and cable lubricant. This happens to be John Deere brand. It doesn't make any difference. I got a couple of different cans of this various lubricants around. I've had uh, good luck with this uh, John Deere product in the past so I'm going to hang each one of these assemblies vertically over a garbage can so that they can drip through for a few minutes and then we'll be back and reassemble this. It's about an hour later now and we've got uh, all four of the cables lubricated. I hung them vertically for, uh, for that hour to allow the 
lubricant to run down the cables. So now we're going to go ahead and see if we can't complete the reinstallation and put this assembly back together. This isn't particularly difficult. The only tricky part can be getting these cables into the slots or the body here of the plastic fitting. I'm going to start with the larger of the three cables on the lower end and we have to start with the junction tube itself. It doesn't really make any difference which of the three tubes you feed this, uh, this cable into. Just pick one, slide it through like that. And this is the tricky part. This uh, the slot that's cut in here has a little bit of a taper. It's a bit of a V-shape. I'm exaggerating, but it's a V-shape like that. And uh, it goes in easy at the one end, and though I've never done a Yamaha cable before, I've done similar cables on other brands of bikes. And these can be a little bit tricky to get in place. Usually what I'll do is I'll start it at one end, like you can see there, and see if I can't just pop it into place. If not, I might have to use a screwdriver to assist with this. Which is what I think I'm going to have to do here. So I'm going to use, let me, let me zoom down here a little bit for you. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to see if I can't. Use a screwdriver. Get it in here. And just push that cable down. And there. Not sure you got all that, but that's uh, that's the gist of what we've got to do right there. I well, got in a little bit too close for that, so let's back out a little bit. And we'll move on to the next one here. Maybe I can show this one better than I did the last one. The large cable, the original cable I just did, is along the top. And this one is next to it on the bottom. I'm going to bring this cable up right here. And we're going to attempt to do the same thing we just did a minute ago. Let's get that cable started at one end. A little less room to work with here. And I think we have all three of them. Complete. There. Again, it's not terribly complicated, just a little finicky. Now I'm going to snap this cap back on, make sure it's seated. And now we have all three of these cables reinstalled. There's a few things I did to prepare to install the carburetors. I removed the battery and air cleaner canister from inside the frame. And the reason I did that is I wanted to allow the intake group right here, which is already pretty stiff, maximum flexibility so when I try to fit the carburetors in, it gives me a little wiggle room. And the other thing you'll notice I did is I loosened the uh, clamps, carburetor intake clamps, and slid them back up and then re snug them up a bit. I don't want them falling down and getting in my way when I go to fit uh, the carburetors in. And then I can, of course, loosen those clamps and slide them back uh, over the mouth of the carburetor. I'm going to sit up on the other side. I'm going to start with the right carburetor. I'm going to also slightly soften these boots, this intake uh, vinyl here with a hot air gun just a bit to soften it and make it a little bit more pliable. I would not advise using an open flame if you're going to do something similar. 
use a hot air gun on a low setting. May not be absolutely necessary, but it's a pretty tight space in here, and I want to give myself a decent fighting chance to get everything together without, in particular, damaging this intake boot, which is very hard. It's 54 years old after all, having been exposed to fuel fumes for many years, and it's, it's uh, pretty much rock hard. And I want to uh, avoid splitting or cracking this uh, at all costs because those are hard to come by. And when you can get them, they're usually not in very good shape or NOS are very expensive. So let's set up on the other side. Got the uh, right carburetor ready to go. I'm going to now gently heat this intake boot with my hot air gun on a low setting and then see if we can't get that carburetor slipped into place. This is the side that goes onto the engine, so we'll see if we can't just get this uh, slipped into place. There, I've got that one in. One of the things I like to do to ensure alignment is there is a casting mark right here on the top of the carburetor uh, intake right here. And there's a casting mark in the cylinders right here. And I just align those two vertically so that they're in line like this. And it helps me make sure that the carburetor is nice and straight. I'm going to go ahead now and install the left carburetor and then we'll come back and tighten up all the fittings and add the linkage for the enrichener circuit. I'm going to try the uh, left side boot without heating the uh, rubber vinyl and see if uh, we can do it without the heat. together pretty well actually. So now I'm going to make sure both carburetors are all the way forward up against the engine and then we can now tighten up these fittings. Make sure that uh, carburetor is approximately centered then this uh, captured screw right here, this flathead screw, is going to snug that up. first of my screwdriver. Do the same thing for the other side. Now I can uh, loosen these clamp screws. And slide the clamps down over the mouth carburetors. In tighten those up, making sure the clamp is aligned with the vertically with the carburetor intake. When tightening up these clamps, I like to just make sure they're good and snug, but I don't reef down on them and overdo it. And I think we about now that. we're going to go ahead and add the crossover linkage bar between the left carburetor and the right carburetor. 
this bar slips through this fitting right here with the set screw, as you can see there. The L-shaped or bent leg goes through from the front to the back so that the leg points to the back of the bike or towards the body of the carburetor like you can see there. Then I'm going to take this little split pin, cotter pin, this is one of the originals, flip it down through the hole and I don't want to lose those things because they are so small and then see if I can't without blocking your view. Open that up a little bit so that uh, it doesn't come out. There. In terms of linkage adjustment, close the enrichner switch on the left carburetor all the way. And you can see the position of the rod. Make sure both plungers are down. And then it's a matter of tightening up the set screw. I'm going to use a 7 millimeter wrench just to snug down on that set screw. Again, making sure both plungers are down all the way. And just snug it up. And then make sure both plungers raise and lower together. So we got the carburetors installed and now we're going to go ahead and add the throttle. Installing uh, throttle cables in these uh, small older Mikuni carburetors, I prefer to do it at the bench if at all possible. Well, certainly you can do it when it's mounted on a machine, but I just find this a little bit easier for me. And in this case, since everything's apart anyway, it's easy to do it this way. A couple of things in terms of orientation. The, if you notice with the junction block here, the top cable, I've got it oriented to the top, is the cable, or part of the cable that goes to the oil pump. The lower two, here and here are the two that go to the carburetor. And the reason I did that is when this cable is oriented on the bike, it'll be in an in orientation such as this, with this oil pump cable being on the top, because then it has to continue on to the uh, oil pump. I'm going to be starting with, uh, in this case, the left carburetor. So this is the slide mechanism off the left carburetor. I left the right carburetor on the bike for now so I don't mix them up. And since this is a left carburetor, this is going to be the cable that I'm going to be installing on this uh, slide mechanism. The first thing you want to make sure you do, of course, is the cap that fits over the top of the uh, slide mechanism needs to go on first. Otherwise, you're going to have to take it all back apart to put that on. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And this can get a little bit fiddly also, so just uh, be aware. And I'll do my very best to try to keep my head out of the way. To prepare for this, I threaded the idle speed lift fitting right here that uh, you use to uh, control the, the position of the slide. And that manages your idle speed. I spun that in almost all the way. Just You can just see it right here, I think. And you can see the relative position I have it in right here. I'm going to pull the cable with my fingers right here all the way so it's extended out as far as I can get it right now. Take the cable. I'm going to hold it so it doesn't slide with my index finger right here. And I'm going to start it into the fitting like you can see there now. Again, keep tension on that cable so it doesn't slide back. And I'm going to rotate the body so that those two parts align. That is the groove and that leg. And I'm going to feed 
I can get this in focus for you. Right there, I'm going to feed that up and over and into that second smaller hole like that. Now we have this assembly together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an L on here for left so I know which carburetor this fits onto because it's easy to get confused. That, of course, will come off later. Now we're going to go ahead and do the right one. Here's the right carburetor slide. I, it dawned on me uh, a moment ago that I didn't explain very well how this goes together, so I'll, um, I'll try to rectify that. This nipple on the end of the cable comes up through the larger of the two holes, and then it slides over and catches in that smaller of the two holes, like you can see right there. So it comes up through this hole, and then it ends up dropping back into that hole, which is countersunk to allow the that head or that nipple to drop back in place. So you come up through and then drop it back down. Should have explained that earlier and slipped my mind. For the right carburetor, we're going to duplicate what we just did on the left carburetor. I'm going to make sure that the cable is extended here all the way out so I have maximum length of cable to work with. I'm going to slide that cap on first, otherwise you're going to have to take this assembly all apart and do it again. We've got uh, that assembly together. Just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and put an R on this one in case the L comes off. So I can keep back at the ranch. You can see the cable assembly here. I am standing on the right side of the motorcycle. The junction block right here fits up into this uh, clamping arrangement that Yamaha provided on the frame. So that will fit up, just lock up into there, snap into there. Again, I'm going to orient the cable so that the longer of the three, that would be the cable that goes to the oil pump, is to the top. And then I have the right carburetor and the left carburetor cables. First thing I'm going to do is just pop that up into place. And see if we can't get these, uh, these installed. Remember this groove in the side, the slot in the side of the slide, aligns with that notch on top of the carburetor. We gotta get that just aligned just right. See if that drops in. Then you rotate that part of the cap there that's got that little protrusion that fits into that notch. And we're going to slide the cap down. I know you probably can't see all of that because I do have to get my hands in here. And if we can't get this cap in place. There. Now we'll do the same thing here on the left side, rather the right side. Again, very simple to do. That slot or that groove aligns with that notch. Again, notice I've got the right carburetor identification on the on this side. Drop that into place. Rotate that cap. So the lines like that. Pull that in place and then just spin down the threaded cap, making sure everything stays in alignment. I typically only tighten these by hand. I don't uh, put tools on them. So at this point, that's really it for the throttle cable installation. Uh, the third part of the cable that goes to the oil pump, I've just got laying here for now. We'll deal with that at another time. The rubber caps that slide down over the top of these boots right here, I'll uh, install later. I'm not going to put them in place right now. I have to get at these knurled screws on the top of each carburetor to set the idle speed 
when I uh, get the engine started and settle down and running. So there's really no sense in putting these caps on and then having to pull them back off later. So I'm just going to leave them there for now. One thing I didn't mention earlier is that when I installed the cable and I snapped it into this uh, bracket here that holds the junction box for the three cables, the opposite end that goes up to the throttle grip, I just slid through this bracket here that holds the top mount for the uh, engine strut. It goes down to the bottom of the engine. And the uh, cable I just brought up through the headstock and just brought it up here and just have it uh, held in place there right now until I get on to working on the headlight and speedometer shell. So that I think is going to be it for this video folks. I initially thought maybe it would work on the rear shock absorbers but I think this is enough content for this video. So recall at this point if you have any uh, issues, questions or thoughts feel free to drop me a note otherwise as usual. Thanks for watching.